And so I knew that there's so many agents that would get on these training appointments with me and say, I'm just so scared to call people because I don't know what they're going to say. They're going to be mean. They're going to reject me. I'm afraid I'm going to say the wrong thing. And I knew for my improv training that there is no wrong thing to say, right? We just react naturally and react the way that, you know, makes sense for us. You're listening to The Real Estate Sessions. I'm your host, Bill Risser, with Fidelity National Title, Tampa District. Thanks for tuning in as we uncover the stories of leaders in our industry. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 214 of The Real Estate Sessions podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, thank you so much for telling a friend. I found my guest for this episode at the Sync Summit 2019 in Orlando, uh, Kayla Priest, was presenting on one of the breakout sessions, and and the title of her session had me as soon as I read it. It was Improv for Real Estate. So I had to attend, and I was blown away by how Kayla was able to get 50 people up in a room and and kind of working on these exercises to help them be better prepared at their job. Really found it fascinating, so I had to have her on the show. Kayla, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so I got to meet you a couple of weeks ago at the 2019 Sync Summit in Orlando, and you were you were leading a workshop, you were leading a breakout session, teaching training. It was really fun to watch. We're going to talk about that later, but I like to kind of just set up how we met, and I think that's pretty cool. Are you enjoying uh, on the on the road time with Sync? Yeah. So when I first started with Sync, I was completely in office, but over the past year, I've taken on a new role where I get to travel. And I've been to so many places this year that I've never been before, uh, like Portland and Seattle and San Diego and all sorts of cool places. So it's been awesome. I love being on the road. Yeah. I was going to say you're young and uh, it, it enjoy it because it's it's a great way to see the country, especially yeah. especially to be honest with someone else is paying for it, right? Yeah. I love it. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you live in Atlanta full-time though, right? That's where you I live. Do. Did you grow up in, in a Georgia? I did. I'm like one of the very rare native wow. Atlantans. Wow. So let's talk about that. Uh, you know, tell me what it was like growing up there. Tell me what you like about Atlanta. Maybe the biggest misconception about Atlanta. How's that? Yeah, I grew up in a suburb of Atlanta called Marietta. It's like 15 minutes, like straight north of the city. Okay. So I actually grew up with like parents who were like terrified to send me downtown. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't actually like go downtown unless it was like a um, field trip or something uh, until I was like in high school. And then we would sneak off and like go to the cool malls downtown. Um, so I like had a very typical suburban upbringing, but Atlanta has had like a real renaissance, like a lot of cool, like, you know, mid-sized cities have had over the past few years where we have like amazing food, really great entertainment. Uh, it's just like a really cool, like fun place now. Do you live downtown? I actually live in Smyrna, which is a little bit like kind of in between Marietta and Atlanta. So I'm a little bit closer. So technically not like Atlanta proper, but it's just like a five, eight minute car ride to get downtown. And that's where your office is, right? With uh, Sync? Yeah. So we're actually in Marietta, really close to where I grew up. Oh, really? I didn't know that. When I applied for the job, uh, I assumed it was downtown because I was like, oh, it's a tech company. It's downtown. And then I got the interview request and saw that it was like six miles from my house. And I was like, hallelujah, no commute. I hope I get this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and you're going away from downtown in your commute. So yes, even better. Even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So you didn't stay local. There was no University of Georgia, Georgia Tech, Georgia Southern. I'm trying to keep you in the state. <laughs> you decide to kind of cross over, kind of become the enemy. And you end up going, you are a Roll Tide girl from Alabama. Is that is that right? Yeah, I went to University of Alabama. My first year there, We our, our uh, football coach was Mike Shula. Okay. And then my second year, we got Nick Saban. <laughs> some, some guy named Nick Saban. Huh? How'd that turn out for you? <laughs> Very fun. It made the football season a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, so what made you choose Alabama? Was there something they in your, uh, your your field of study? Was it you wanted to be a little away? From, sometimes it's just want to get away from home. What was your what was your reason? 
I was a very typical 18 year old, not thinking about money, not thinking about anything. Just like, I want to get like far enough away from home that I have this new experience, but not far enough away that like, it's hard for me to come back and visit. And I had lived in the same house my entire life. So I had been to elementary, middle and high school with some of the same people. And I was like, I don't want to go to Georgia and I'm not smart enough to go to Georgia Tech. So I don't, I don't want to go there because I'm just going to go to school with the same people I've always been to school with. And I was like, I want something new. I want to go somewhere. I don't know anyone. And it was Alabama. And my parents are huge Georgia fans. So it kind of broke their heart a little bit, but it ended up okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say that. So I'm sure it's fun around the, some sort of late in the fall when, when the, uh, when the play, when the SEC playoff comes along or the championship game, and it's very possible it's going to be Georgia, Alabama. There's been a few of those in your uh, time, right? Yeah, it's a rough watch with the parents for yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you even looking at your history and some of the things I could find about you, you you even did some work, you know, kind of um, around the stadium, like at Bryant Denny Stadium. You're hanging around, I'm sure, like even on game days, right? Kind of working. Yeah. So I was very lost in college about what I wanted to do when I quote unquote grew up. So I ended up working a catering job. Um, and we had the contract for all the like luxury sky boxes and like event spaces at Bryant Denny, which is Alabama's football stadium. So yeah, it was really crazy game days. If you've ever been to an SEC football campus uh, on game day, it's absolute madness. So we would have to park like two or three miles away and walk in. And so then you'd have like before you even were on your feet for all day, you're walking two miles to get to your office essentially. And then you're on your feet running around doing like catering work is really grueling. Um, I could not do it now. I needed my like young 19 year old feet (laughs) to do that work then. And so then, yeah, just working during the game, catching little glimpses through the like sky boxes when you can cleaning up at the end of the night and then walking two miles back to your car So it was really hard work. And I thought that like catering was going to be the thing I wanted to do forever. But I tried like four or five more things before I actually settled (laughs) on what I ended up doing. But it was a fun. I did that job all through college. It was super fun. What was your field of study there at Alabama? So I ended up kind of close to catering. My official major is restaurant, hotels, and meetings management. So it's technically a hospitality management degree. Sure. I could have gotten that in-state at Georgia. So why I didn't do that and spend so much less money, I don't know why. But when you're 18, no one can tell you anything. You knew it all, right? Like all of yeah. us did at 18. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, Look, I think it's great. I think that you decided to go out. And there are a lot of people who said, no, I'm staying with my friends. In fact, mm-hmm. most of your friends did that, right? Yeah, for they sure. I had a couple friends that went away, but um, most of them stayed in Georgia and they had great experience too. So mm-hmm. not knocking it, but I made some great friends at Alabama I'm still close with. So it was good. I mentioned earlier, I met you at the uh, Sync Summit that this year was held in Orlando. Let's talk about what's that path to Commissions Inc. look like for you? What were you doing before, you know, and then how did you uh, how did you come across them? Basically, I got to the point in college where I had to declare a major and I still wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, which I don't think any like 18 to 20 year old actually knows what they want to do for the rest of their lives. But I had been working catering and I had started doing some like event planning stuff with the catering company. So I graduated college in 2009. So around 2008, believe it or not, it became hard to get loans to pay to go to school with all the financial crisis happening. So I made the decision to move back to Atlanta and live with my parents and finish my degree from Alabama online. So I could work at the same time Mm -hmm. uh, to help pay for some of that school. So I ended up getting an internship with a wedding planner. And then I blinked. It was 10 years later. I was still doing event planning and I hated it. (laughs) Oh, no. So (laughs) so there's got to be what is Commissions Inc. next or was there a bridge? Yes, I went straight from event planning to sync. So basically, I had been feeling an improv. I know we're going to talk about it later, but it plays a big role in this, where I kind of had this feeling um, in my event planning career, like I was stuck and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I just knew it wasn't event planning, but I didn't really have the like tools to really verbalize that or like kind of the motivation to figure it out. Cause I was like, well, this is my life and this is just what it's going to be. Everybody hates their job a little bit. So 
whatever. But finally, I had it within me to be like, okay, I know I've got transferable skills here. I know that I'm good at XYZ. And I know I can use that for another job. I just don't know what it is. So I told myself, I'm going to find a job doing something that I think that I'll be good at. And I think that I'll like, and I'll give myself a year. And if after a year, I say, hey, this really isn't for me, I'll do something else. I was like, but I owe it to myself to give myself this year to figure it out. And so I literally Googled good places to work in Atlanta (laughs) and Sync was on the like top list for like three, four years in a row. And so I applied for a tech support position. I've never worked tech support, but I am pretty tech savvy. And I knew that I was good on the phone with people. So I said, Hey, I'm going to try it and see. I went in for an interview and I had the job offer two days later. You mentioned improv and I've got to tell you, I've got this weird soft spot in my heart for improv. And it's, it's a weird story. (laughs) It's even how I got there, but it's Adam Carolla. And I don't know if you know who Adam Carolla is, but um, big podcaster. And mm-hmm. he was also a guy who had a show called The Man Show with Jimmy Kimmel. He came up with Jimmy Kimmel in the 90s. Uh, they were both doing just comedy bits on radio stations. And now mm-hmm. Kimmel hosts, it's not, you know, that he's got the uh, Jimmy Kimmel show and Corolla's got one of the top podcasts in the country. But he his start, when he decided he wanted to get out of construction, which is what he was doing, was he scraped all his money together to go to an improv school in L.A., And Mm -hmm. that was his entry into this world. And he talks about improv in a very interesting way, saying that like everybody should probably go to an improv class, not just people who are going to get up and speak, but anyone should because of the things that it does for you. So I want to, I want to take some time here to talk about, you know, first of all, how you came to, you know, embrace improv. And then let's just talk about what it does for people in general, right? Yeah, so I kind of alluded to it earlier, but I really credit um, my first improv class and then exploring improv more with getting me out of that terrible job that I hated. It is what gave me the like confidence and the just wherewithal to be like, hey, this is not this doesn't have to be the rest of my life, you know? And so when I look back and and then when I meet people, I'm like, if you had met me before I did improv and now I'm still myself, but I'm just like a kicked up version of myself where I'm, I'm, like I said, more confident, but I'm also just faster on my feet, just have better conversations and connect better with people. And I've become a better leader. So it's so funny. There's actually this um, kind of school of thought within improv that's called applied improv. And it's all about taking the principles of improv and applying them to real life or business or your personal life, whatever it may be. So I can't say that I've ever watched the man show, but I did listen to love line. Um, <laughs> there you go. Probably too young <laughs> with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. <laughs> right. Uh, so I, I'm familiar If you like anyone in comedy, chances are they got their start doing improv. There's so many people who find other parts of comedy or just keep doing improv. But like Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, Will Ferrell, like all the guys and, you know, girls on SNL, like everyone got their start in improv. And I've never met one person who took an improv class that's like, man, I wish I hadn't done that. You know, like it really does just change people's perspective and, just kind of makes everything else easier. <laughs> Let's talk about that a little deeper, right? You, uh, you, you had a breakout session at the uh, Sync Summit called I think, Improv for Real Estate. So mm-hmm. right away, I was hooked. I mean, you, you had me at improv. I'm like, this. I, I've got to go see this. I know I'm going to have to get up and do things because she's probably going to have some stuff for the whole room to do. That's not my favorite thing at a conference. Mm-hmm. But I, I uh, manned up and, and just said, I'm going to go do it. And had a blast. And so I want you to talk about uh, how you decided to kind of, you know, bring this applied improv into that world. And are you, you know, you, you must have brought this to your, the bosses and the people that kind of mm-hmm. run the team that you're a part of and said, Hey, I think there's an opportunity here with improv. How did that, how did that conversation go? Yeah. Well, I have, whenever I have the opportunity to talk about improv in the workplace, I do. So 
everyone's probably sick of it. But what I know is that I came in to work at this tech company with no tech experience. And I really quickly worked my way up from working, you know, like I said, tech support to then doing like webinar based training to now being up in front of people teaching the platform in like two and a half years. So I've had to learn a lot of the platform really quickly. But I know that what's allowed me to do that is feeling comfortable talking in front of people and just, you know, the ability to not be, there's no stage fright anymore, right? right? So I know how much it's helped me. And when I got more into the training side of sync, and I started really specializing in scripting and conversion tactics, I saw how much um, those principles of improv helped me just think more quickly. Like when someone threw up an objection, it was easier for me than some agents that have been on the phone for years to know the right way to come back from that just because my brain thinks in a little bit of a different way. Uh, And I feel more comfortable in those unknown situations, which is essentially what improv is. It's just improvisation, creating something where, you know, there was nothing before. And so I knew that there's so many agents that would get on these training appointments with me and say, I'm just so scared to call people because I don't know what they're going to say. They're going to be mean. They're going to reject me. I'm afraid I'm going to say the wrong thing. And I knew for my improv training that there is no wrong thing to say, right? We just react naturally and react the way that, you know, makes sense for us. And that's the right thing to say. So I was like, if there was a way that I could help these agents that I train every day that are struggling so much with this, and when you're working internet leads, you have to get on the phone, you know, how can I teach that? And when we started planning Summit this year, I Steve Mernon is my boss. He's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and he gave me the opportunity to do it. I've done a couple of smaller sessions in office with Sync employees to help them be more comfortable on the phone. So he'd been able to see me work a little bit. And he actually came to see a show that I was in in Atlanta where I performed too. So I think knowing that he had seen me perform and doing those sessions in the office probably made him feel a little bit more comfortable with just giving me free reign to do it. But once he said, yeah, you're in, he let me run with it and kind of put, you know, together what I thought was going to be best for everybody. Well, it was a fantastic breakout session. I'll tell you that right now. I've already, I've already well, I brought some of your ideas back to our team. Um, our sales manager sat in on a different session than I did. And she was the exact same way. Uh, the ability to kind of get, you know, people, kind of understanding, you know, how to get together as a group and think a certain way or how to um, come out of a shell or to kind of get fired up for a day. I mean, you had all kinds of these different exercises that I'm assuming that came right out of the world of improv. These are all things that you had done, right? As either mm-hmm. while you were going through school and and now you probably help other people as they're become, you know, coming into the improv world. Is that kind of the case? Yeah, so they were all exercises that I've learned. Um, I've taken just countless classes now, and I've kind of graduated from the class program, but I'm still taking workshops and learning from different practitioners. And then um, from there, I've been able to run workshops and uh, coach improv teams. So it's all little bits and pieces from those like five, almost six years now that I've been performing that I know work really well in that more corporate setting. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's all things that have a purpose. So it's not just getting up and, you know, messing around for like messing around sake. It's all things that are, have a lesson. It's almost like an improv fable <laughs> where it's like there will be a reason that we're doing this. It feels really fun in the moment and it's great. But, oh, wait, we also just learned something. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to play rock, paper, scissors. But trust me, it's more than rock, paper, scissors. (laughs) Exactly. That's everyone's favorite game. By by the way, way. it's awesome. It really was a way to to warm up a room. Just fantastic. Your title now is uh, your your title is your community engagement and training. Is that Mm -hmm. is that right? That's right. So what does your typical typical day look like? There are times you're probably in the office. I know when you're on the road, you're definitely training people. But what is your typical day? Mm -hmm. So typically I'm in the office and seeing a typical tech company, we have slowly grown over the past eight years to where we have taken over suite after suite of this like big office complex that we're in. So we're pretty spread out, but I have a small team there that works in the office with me. So I kind of have my hand in a lot of things. So 
I man our regular um, kind of like catch all email. So it's replying to people that have training questions. What's the best course for me? I need to get registered, you know, just like kind of troubleshooting. Hey, I couldn't sign up for this. So it's kind of communicating with our clients to make sure they're in the right class and that they have all the details they need. Um, But I also run our syncommunity.com website. So it's a little bit of web design and making sure that all of our courses are listed with all the important information. I might do a webinar because we have a new feature, maybe, uh, or it's just training. Maybe it's a role play webinar that we host every other week um, where clients can get on and actually practice our sync scripts and practice handling objections and asking for appointments. And uh, one cool thing that I get to do is do some marketing with our um, community marketing director. So helping with the direction of how we let our sync family know about all the uh, events that we have Mm -hmm. and a little bit of all the weird office stuff in between. Um, Sync is really cool. And that a perk that we have is they feed us lunch every day. So we get a chef that cooks us lunch. And so, of course, we got to throw that in. So messing around because it's an open office and it's hard not to. (laughs) Right. But yeah, it's really just communicating with clients. I man our Facebook group. So people that have troubleshooting questions in there, it's all just interacting and engaging with our clients and making sure that they've got, you know, all the information they need to make their investment worth it with us. You're in that unique position, though, where not only you're working with the customers, the realtors are your customers, Mm -hmm. but you're also... You kind of mentioned earlier, you help the inside sales team. You help them be better at their gig by kind of helping them open up and understand some some things, right? Yeah. Anytime I have the ability to help them overcome objections for, you know, people who are maybe just hesitant to adopt a new feature, or maybe we have a new event that we know is going to be amazing for our clients if we can get them to sign up for it. You know, how can I help you? Um, you know, just better explain and share what the sync community team is, you know, what we have going on. That's I love doing that stuff. So yeah, it's really fun that I get to kind of have my hand in both sides. Right. So we've we've kind of glossed over what commissions Inc. or sync really is. And I think we should probably, this is a little late in the uh, podcast, but I, I always feel that most people, especially the people that listen to this podcast, understand who the major players are in the uh, world of tech. And when mm-hmm. it comes to lead generation and, and uh, CRM and curating and nurturing and all of those things, um, obviously we at Fidelity National Financial really think sync is the best tool out there. <laughs> so, I do too. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I'm sure you're aware of the story you mentioned about the eight year history or something, but Mm -hmm. if you, if, if when someone meets you and I don't want, you don't need the elevator pitch, but when someone says you work for who sync, like kitchen sink, you're (laughs) going to say, no, this is what sync is. What would you say? Yeah. So the really easy answer is we are a suite of tools for real estate agents. So when I say a suite of tools, I'll normally throw in there that we do a um, kind of consumer facing website. So home search site for people looking for homes in your area, a CRM where you can track who you're trying to work with, who you're currently working with and who you already worked with. So you can prospect, follow up, stay in touch, market, um, and really streamline your day. So our goal at Sync is to be an all-in-one solution where you don't have to have multiple tabs open all day and have bills going out to four or five different service providers. Our goal at the end of the day is to give you all the tools you need in one spot. So you can be as streamlined and as successful as possible. Right. I I think... You know, I think so many people, I don't want to say we're burned out by the word CRM, but mm-hmm. it's, you know, there's, it's just bandied about and no one really talks about it, yeah. but, but that R in CRM is super important, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> relationship building is like the key in working internet leads. Um, yeah. That's like, I just, I'm in Dallas, Texas right now doing, uh, I did a training earlier today. And it was one of those things where someone was like, well, where should I meet them first? Should I try to go to their house? And I'm like, well, that's a stranger. And you got a lot to do before you earn the trust to get in the house, right? So when we were talking about scripting, it's just like, how do we build that relationship with a stranger? So I get to use a lot of my improv skills when we talk about that. But yeah, it's super important. And there's a ton. I'm in so many real estate, like Facebook groups, and people always post, you know, what's the best CRM? What should I be using? And 
of course, there's always someone that says the best one is the one you use. I happen to believe that our technology is superior. Well, I don't believe it. I know it. We have the best tech team in the game. Um, So our technology really is superior. And I think we do a great job at listening to feedback of our clients and what do you need that's going to make you more successful? What do you need that's going to make your day easier? So at the end of the day, it's all about creating opportunity for you and through whether that's through marketing or just the CRM or, you know, through whatever feature, that's our goal is how do we create opportunity for you to have more relationships with people? Right. And I, I think for me, the the fact that sync is a CRM is uh, well, I've heard it called a smart CRM before, right? Where it's actually telling you, Hey, there's activity here. You need to make a phone call. And that's quite unique. Um, I mean, there are others who've kind of followed along and are in that space now, but Um, Mm -hmm. Talk about that for a second, about that, the value that that brings to a client. Yeah. So I actually started at Sync in May of 2017. And so now here we are in November of 2019. And when I think about the features that we've added since I first started, it's honestly hard to keep up with. So that keeps me employed because our clients need clarity on that too. But it's hard for us in the office to keep up too, because times have really changed and people, consumers are smarter or not even smarter. They're just more aware than they used to be. And so it's no longer just like sending out the same drip campaign to every single person and getting people to reply, right? People, you know, our consumers are savvier than that now. So our features that we've rolled out to really kind of automate systems for you and run in the background, I always say in training, it's eyes on every single one of your leads when you're a sleep, right? It's when you're out at your appointments, it's still working for you. So it's behavioral messaging that's, you know, recognizing when people perform behaviors that would really be a great opportunity for conversation. It's making sure that people when they leave your site are getting the right ads to bring them back to your site through one of our amazing um, marketing tools called ListCast. It's uh, our new auto tracks. Uh, which is a like updated drip campaign system that really makes it super intuitive and really easy to do follow up with your sphere and your past clients. So it basically is like an agent's pulled in so many different directions throughout the day. And we're huge, you know, proponents in like time blocking and making your calls. But if you're making your calls and setting appointments, you need help with the rest of the stuff, right? So like that's one of the things I love about Sync is how in the past two and a half years, I mean, we have so many new features, I can't count them Um, because we have core values, which we're huge believers in. And one of them is to innovate and constantly improve. And like we do it all the time, so much so that I probably just rambled and left off like the biggest, newest features that we have. But yeah, it's all about just creating that opportunity where there maybe wasn't one before. Right. Well, I'm like, you're for someone who's only been in, with the company a couple of years and you're not really in sales, you're doing a fantastic job of talking about your product. Thank you. I should do some demos when I get back to the office. <laughs> That's great. That's great. It's awesome. So look, I've, I've had you here pretty close to the half hour I, I wanted of your time and you're you're in a hotel somewhere. So I'm going to ask you the same question I've asked every guest on the podcast. And that is, if you could give one piece of advice to a new agent just getting started, what would it be? To not partner with a broker who just says, yeah, whatever you want to do, just do it. I see so many teams that break apart at the seams at the slightest of tugs because there's no one that wants to have any accountability. So one of my favorite things to train on is accountability for your team and your office and, you know, your agents. So my big uh, recommendation and suggestion is to work with a broker or in this case, a side owner, even um, that's going to provide you training and direction, but really hold you accountable to your goals and not team goals, but your own personal individual goals, because what's a great living for me might be different for you. So I think sometimes new agents have like join a team and it's one size fits all. Let's all go do this. And we're all the same and just whatever you get done, you get done. But I think it's way better to have someone that sets high expectations for you, but helps you hold your expectations for yourself, provides that training and gives you that tough love when you need it. Cause you need a lot of guidance at the beginning. I know I did. (laughs) Yeah. 
Kayla, if someone wants to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to get in touch with? There's a social site or what do you, uh, how do we get, how do we reach you? Well, my name is Kayla with a C. So C-A-Y-L-A, priest, like the Catholic kind. So you can find me on LinkedIn through there. You can find me on Reach 150 and read some reviews of people that have done cool stuff with me in training and uh, our improv breakout. And then you can also just email me, Kayla.Priest at SyncPro.com. If I did a really good job selling you on our platform and you want me to get you in touch with someone in sales, just hit me up with an email there. Awesome. <laughs> Kayla, Kayla, you're, you, you know, uh, Myrna is going to listen to this and be very happy. So <laughs> I, I know, I know Steve well from uh, back in the day. So yeah, he's uh, an old school FNF guy. Yeah. And, it, but, but uh, always looking for something new and different, which is the, the perfect mix, right? I know. I yeah. love it. Perfect. And a huge part of why I've been able to grow so much over the past year. So super thankful to him. Awesome. Well, I can't well, thank you enough for your time. Thank, thank you for ta- take, taking a little take, bit of time out of your, your evening to share your thoughts with the listeners. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It was so cool to meet you in Tampa and I'm glad we got to catch up.